Hi, my name's Neil Bubke, and I'm the Director of Music and Fine Arts here at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. Tonight, two members of our congregation are going to be providing a lovely concert for you. That uh, concert is being brought to you by Christine Hopley Annan and Matt Annan. Christine holds degrees from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and Rice University. On modern violin, Christine has held positions with the Wisconsin Philharmonic, Pro Musica Chamber Orchestra, the Dayton Philharmonic, the Rochester Philharmonic, and the Madison Symphony. She's a frequent substitute in the Milwaukee Symphony and Milwaukee Ballet Orchestras. Christine has also performed as a Baroque violinist in several Baroque ensembles, including the Madison Baroque, I'm sorry, the Madison Bach Musicians and Sonata a Quattro. Additionally, Christine is a music educator, teaching elementary and general music, as well as private violin and viola lessons in the greater Milwaukee area. Matt Annan has held the position of principal horn of the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra since 2011. Matt was previously a member of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra, the Rochester Philharmonic Orchestra, and the Louisville Orchestra. Matt was also a fellow at the New World Symphony. He's appeared as a soloist with the Milwaukee Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Edo DeVart and Ken David Mazur. Matt is also the K3, K4, K5 choir director at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay. I'd like to invite you from the comfort of your homes to welcome Christine and Matt Annan.
piece was the Ashokan Farewell by Jay Unger. And that piece is um, kind of significant for me. When I was growing up, I really enjoyed Ken Burns' Civil War series. And that introduction was on every episode of that series. And over the years, I've become somewhat of a American history buff, and I always think back that maybe it's because of that tune that I, I really enjoyed um, hearing. Um, it's very, um, just a very beautiful, haunting melody. Um, and actually, during this time where we've been staying at home, I've had several people tell me they've been following up on their Ken Burns documentaries um, to fill the time, and that's not a bad way to spend your time. Um, I wanted to say one thing about our bios before we continue. Uh, Neil said I'm the director of the K3, K4, K5 choir, which is true, but for four years I served as the kind of the assistant slash traffic cop to Christine, who was the choir director for, was it four years? Three or four years. So I learned from the best, and once Christine left her post, I was able to take that over. Anyway, I'm gonna turn the mic over to Christine next. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this next song is a solo sonata for solo violin, no accompaniment by Prokofiev. And it was written in the late 1940s. Um, this piece, I, I kind of discovered it in, not quarantine, but at stay at home times. I went through a lot of my old music to try to figure out what I had. And I found this piece, I. Um, studied in my undergrad, and um, I thought it'd be a fun piece to relearn playing by myself. So it's in three movements, and it was originally written for um, conservatory students to, and it was supposed to be played as a group of a whole bunch of violin solo students playing this piece all together in unison. So it would have been quite raucous, I feel like. Um, but it, it is in three movements. Um, a fast allegro and then a slow theme and variations and then uh, another allegro to end the piece. Enjoy. Thank you. 
The next two pieces that uh, Neil has graciously agreed to play with me are written by Reinhold Glier, who is a uh, Russian um, composer who lived in, from about 1875 to 1956 or so. So he lived through a very interesting period of Russian history as far as music goes. Um, he would have grown up listening to Tchaikovsky and then spent his life kind of um, on the same path as Stravinsky in terms of time period, but Stravinsky um, broke off and went avant-garde and, and wrote The Rite of Spring, which caused a riot in 1913. And um, Glier kind of hung on to the 19th century romanticism of Tchaikovsky um, throughout his life. And these pieces were written in about 1908, um, a romance in intermezzo, just short little beautiful pieces for horn and piano and I hope you enjoy.
The next piece is called Cantabile by Paganini, and um, it's a little bit different than what you might be expecting if you hear the composer Paganini. He was known as being a very virtuosic violinist and um, play, uh, composing a lot of very difficult works for violin. Um, but this piece is much more of a singing quality, that's what cantabile means, and um, kind of operatic even. And um, it actually, I was researching a little bit about the background of this piece, I found out that many of his pieces were composed to be met, accompanied with guitar, because Paganini apparently also played the guitar very well. Um, but this piece was one of the only ones that he, as an original version, had written to be meant for piano and violin. So again, thanks to Neil for playing it with me.
next piece that I'm going to play is by Esa Pekka Salonen, who is a contemporary composer. For those of you who are music aficionados, know that he is set to be the next music director of the San Francisco Symphony whenever they resume activities. Um, this piece is called the Concert Etude for Solo Horn. And it's one of those pieces that appears on competition, so it's kind of been on my bucket list of solo pieces to try to learn. And when I first got the music at first glance, I played through a couple of bars and put it back on the shelf. This is, this is too hard. And over the years, I've pulled it back out and whittled away at a bar here, a bar there. And over time, I've kind of gotten to know the piece. It's, it's uh, had some challenges, and some things that the horn does in this piece um, are extended techniques, such as playing the stopped horn, where we put our hand in the bell um, a little bit differently to make a brassy sound. There's another section that has alternate fingerings so that the pitch is supposed to be off a little bit by quarter tone. Um, there's also a vocalization part where um, I'm playing the horn, but I'm singing through the horn at the same time, and you can create chords with that. I'm not sure that's going to come through on the live stream with the microphone, but you just have to imagine that. And um, let's see, then at the end, it kind of takes, goes back to the, origin, the original part of the horn, which is the natural horn, and plays some natural horn um, uh, harmonics, which sound a little bit out of tune to the, to the ear when you hear it, but that's actually what the intent is. It's supposed to sound a little bit rustic, as if it was the original horn that was uh, brought into the orchestra in the 1700s or 1600s. So this is the concert etude.
Thank you, Matt, and thank you, uh, Mr. Solonen, for not providing an accompaniment uh, to that etude. <laughs> so, 
we've got a few questions that our audience has texted in. If you don't mind stepping to the microphone, I'll ask you a few. And um, I'll start out with uh, this question. Uh, this is for both of you. What are your impressions of the MSO's conductor, Ken David Mazur, after his first season? First impressions of Ken David Mazur are wonderful. I think he's fantastic. He's a wonderful musician. Unfortunately, we didn't really get to complete our season. Um, so there were a few concerts left out there that we were looking forward to, but in the concerts that we did play, um, you can just tell that he loves music and is passionate, and he has a natural technique in his, in his arms, in his hands, that is unteachable, that um, he just has a natural ability with, with conducting, and, and it's been great so far. Hopefully we'll see him before too long. And this question is for Christine. We heard in your bio that you play Baroque violin as well as modern violin. And could you just quickly tell us uh, what some of the differences are in how you approach the two instruments? Sure, so um, a Baroque violin is using an older setup that would have been used before they came up with all these modern contraptions such as the chin rest or shoulder rest, um, the fingerboard would be a bit shorter because they weren't playing those virtuosic pieces that needed you to go that high. Um, but the big differences, I would say, are in the bow, which is shorter, and it has more of a, um, I always mix up my convex and concave, but it has more of a curve the opposite way of the modern bow, which causes the bow to be much more springy and light um, and articulate. So. Um, and it's also shorter. And then the other big difference is the gut strings. They're made out of gut from animals, and um, we can use those to just get a more of a raw sound almost. Um, and because of that, we don't, on the Baroque violin, I wouldn't use as much vibrato um, unless I'm using it as a special embellishment. Um, so I, I like to play Baroque style music like Bach, Handel, um, Vivaldi on Baroque violin, although I do, of course, play it on this instrument as well, but it's interesting to hear the difference just back to back sometimes. This next text message is not so much a question, but a shout out from Uncle Sam, uh, your real Uncle Sam. Uh, just wanted to say I'm so proud to be related to such talented human beings. Uncle Sam, uh, we at the United Methodist Church of Whitefish Bay are very, very honored uh, to have Christine and Matt share their gifts with us regularly throughout the year in the congregation. So we feel honored as well. Here's a question from one of your uh, choir students. Sophia Case was mesmerized by that last horn piece. And she wants to know, what in the heck did Mr. Matt put into the end of his horn? Can you show us what that thing is? <laughs> Not just the hand. This is a uh, mute, and it softens the sound of the horn a little bit and uh, gives it a different color. And we use it quite often in particularly contemporary music. Um, and I'm lucky I didn't forget it at home, to be honest with you. Thanks for the great question, Sophia. Um, this next question is from the Steinmetz family. They're wondering, can you hear them clapping from home? <laughs> Wonderful job. <laughs> and uh, there's one more question here, and that is, are you the same two Annans who starred in Noah's Ark a few years ago wearing bunny costumes? We're going to hope that that video has been removed from YouTube. <laughs> so, but that was part of our choir duties as being the leaders, yes. Well, Christine and Matt have one more piece to share with you tonight. And once again, we want to thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're going to have next week off, but our final concert of the season 
is just around the corner on Wednesday, August 19th, where you can hear some more beautiful horn music, this time played by Adam Nelson, who will be accompanied by David Hine. We hope you've enjoyed the program tonight, and we'll see you uh, on the 19th. Don't tune out yet. Dvorak. Thank you.